All right, guys, I wanted to make this video today to cover a couple of different topics. One being CarScope UK. This is an exciting new brand that we have here in the States. Like many of the other brands in our store, we are the US distributor exclusively for this product line. Uh, Henry Whiteman is the owner. He's a really interesting guy, very passionate about the products that he makes. And like a lot of the other brands we carry, they are a smaller business, which is appealing to me. Um, I get to talk directly with the owners of a lot of these brands on more or less a daily basis, which makes the experience really awesome for me and in and, and turn awesome for our customers. So uh, this is a fraction of the lineup that we have here right now. He has come out with some new products uh, since this shipment landed. So if you go to his site and you see some things on there that we don't have in our store, just know that it's in the works and we're gonna get it here very soon. Um, today I'm going to be prepping this Ford GT for paint protection film and uh, paint correction service. So we're going to be going through uh, how to use some of his chemicals to prep a car, the wheels, tires, and the paint specifically. Um, they're really awesome products. They're very unique and I've, in my experience, they're very strong and concentrated, which is great. You know, they're not watered down, um, but we'll get into that a little bit more here once I pull the car outside and we get to washing it. So uh, the other reason I wanted to make this video is to give you guys a uh, pretty exciting update about Parks Detailing and Parks Car Care in general. Um, over the last few years, Parks Car Care has grown pretty tremendously, um, faster than I anticipated it, it would grow. Um, and as a result, I have faced sort of this dichotomy of uh, managing a service business that was at the time growing like crazy and also a car care business that was growing. So I found my efforts spread like many small business owners, you know, I was wearing a lot of hats and, and trying to do a lot of things at one time. Um, and recently uh, I've made the decision to focus more of my time on car care. This is not to say that service is going to be stopping by any means. Uh, we're still booked out for a few months with PPF and ceramic coating jobs. I'm still going to be doing that, but it is going to be on a more select basis. And my goal for that is really to be able to slow down the work that I'm doing on the cars and create content like this. Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of demand from our car care clients that they want to see content, um, which I completely understand. Um, a lot of really cool stuff happens in here. And over the past few years, uh, service has, it was growing. I had multiple team members in here. We were cranking out cars. Um, the quality still remained high, but it's hard to capture content um, when you've got two, three cars getting worked on at one time. Uh, obviously, as a result, I was doing more sales, more customer service work, so not a lot of content was getting captured. Um, and I realized the downsides of that. So um, as of recent, you know, I've made the decision to scale service back. Um, we're not gonna be doing as much volume. Um, and what that means for our service business clients is that if you're choosing to bring your car here for PPF and coatings, there's likely gonna be more of a wait time than there has been over the past few years. Um, but for me, this is really, this is my passion. Um, I've always tried to focus on the highest quality work possible, not necessarily how many cars can I get done. So for me, um, if you're one of my followers or friends that's known me for a long time since starting this business, this is really like a dream for me um, to be able to um, grow my business through car care products while being able to focus on the service projects that really excite me and that I feel will bring the most valuable content to our customers who buy those products. Um, perfection work has always been what's made me happy and so I'm very fortunate to be able to have this opportunity in the car care side of things to carry brands like Envy Car Care, Platinum Potions, CarScope, S-Tech Formula. Those are all exclusive to my store and so I feel a sense of duty to uh, really try to make as much content for you guys surrounding those products. So this isn't to say that in the future I might not scale service back out. Um, if you are a talented paint protection film installer or detailer um, and you're wanting to work for a smaller high-end outfit like this, please feel free to shoot me your information. My email is in the signature of these videos. Um, 
So it's not to say that this is gonna be the setup forever, but um, for the foreseeable future, this is gonna be my, my plan moving forward. So I really look forward to being able to make more videos like this, share an inside look of what we do here with you guys, and ultimately deliver value in terms of how to use these products in the best way possible. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you guys and I'm gonna get this Ford GT pulled outside and we're gonna get to prepping it with these CarScope products. So we've got the car outside. Uh, as always, I'm gonna start with the wheels and tires. Uh, for CarScope, they have two products um, that are designed for wheels and tires. One being Rotor, this is their wheel shampoo. Um, this can be used in the foam cannon. Today I'm gonna be using it in the Marilex foaming pump sprayer. I also put it in my wheel bucket as my wheel cleaning shampoo. It's an alkaline cleaner that's dilutable. Today I'm using it at one to 10. It is safe for ceramic coated wheels at this dilution. So what a lot of people will do uh, and how Henry intended it to be used is say you deep clean your wheels, you ceramic coat them and you're at the point of just maintaining and cleaning brake dust off. Uh, you can use rotor to clean the wheels, also clean the tires. Um, if you have like a really robust tire dressing on it, such as like ink or Envionics, something like that, one of the SiO2 based uh, tire dressings where you don't necessarily have to reapply it every single time. Um, that's kind of like a case by case basis. So if your tires are absolutely disgusting, then obviously you're gonna wanna use something a little bit stronger um, to actually scrub the tires with a stiff brush uh, and then reapply your dressing. But if you fall into the camp of uh, my wheels are ceramic coated, my tires aren't too bad, where just like a wheel shampoo could clean them, um, or even like a car soap, then something like Rotor is gonna be great to just be like your all-in-one wheel and tire uh, cleaner. Obviously at a stronger dilution, it'll cut through more brake dust, um, but it is alkaline. So I would you know, advise people that have ceramic coatings on their wheels to be uh, aware of that, that at a stronger dilution, it, it could start to um, over time affect the hydrophobic effects of your wheel coating. Uh, Siege is the other wheel and tire product he has. This is an alkaline cleaner as well. Um, this is not a product that I would recommend using on ceramic coated wheels. Um, even at the highest dilution that he recommends, uh, 15 to one um, for light cleaning, uh, over time, you could see a deterioration in the hydrophobics of your wheel coating. That being said, this is an amazing clean slate product. Um, is what I would describe it as, meaning if you just want the wheels totally dead clean, you're not worried about the coating. Like in this case, I'm not, these wheels are not ceramic coated. They have quite a bit of dust on them. Uh, the car only has 6,000 miles, but you can tell, you know, it's probably been a while since the wheels were actually deep cleaned. So today I'm gonna use uh, Siege at 15 to one in a Marilex foaming uh, pump sprayer. I've not asked Henry if you can use Siege in the foam cannon. I imagine you can. Um, that's one thing I forgot to mention, I think about uh, Rotor, is that in a lot of his videos and a lot of his clients over in the UK, they're using uh, Rotor in a foam cannon, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, you're able to foam the entire wheel and tire down the arches, everything. Um, I would say that's probably gonna be more effective um, than using it in a foaming pump sprayer, if I'm just being honest. Um, you know, it's gonna have more volume and more products, so. Um, but the downside to that is you're pulling out multiple foam cannon bottles and it's just a little more work. So depending on how in depth you wanna get with it, um, you know, using the pump sprayer might be a little more uh, efficient. Um, another really cool thing about Rotor and Baltic is snow foam that I'm gonna be using here after the wheels and tires. They have anti-corrosion inhibitors in them. So being in the UK, uh, there's a lot of inclement weather there during the winter. So lots of road salt uh, that gets thrown down. And as a result, you know, you get rusting of like your suspension components, uh, your brake rotors, things like that. So I have noticed that with rotor, um, the infamous 
rotor dust or uh, rust that comes up after a car wash is greatly reduced. Um, in some cases, I don't get any of it, uh, which is pretty awesome. So you can also use rotor in a engine bay. So I think that's a pretty cool feature, especially for people here in the US that are in the northern climates um, where you are getting a lot of road salt. And even here in the southeast, you know, I see cars that come in that are not that old, um, like my F80 is a 2018. And if you really start to look close at the suspension components and some of the engine bay pieces, um, there is like some really light surface rust. So pretty cool feature of Baltic and Rotor, um, the anti-corrosion inhibitors. Um, a couple of the other tools I'm gonna be using from Henry, uh, the CarScope soft touch brush. So we just got these in. Um, unlike his uh, other brush, the wooden handle, uh, the bristles on the wooden handle one are a little bit stiffer. So I like those for like door hinges um, where sometimes you get like that Cosmoline or like just lots of years of buildup uh, dirt and grime and things like that where it's a little bit harder to shift it uh, in engine bays, especially like some of the cracks and crevices. I like the stiffer brush. That being said, I would be careful um, with these on like soft jet black paints. I wouldn't go crazy scrubbing bugs and, uh, you know, using it on bare paint as to where the soft touch brush is extremely soft. I mean, you're not gonna, uh, it would be pretty hard to scratch the paint with this. You'd have to use a pretty good amount of force. So I brought both out today. Um, just to show you guys but another thing about the wooden handle brushes I've been kind of torture testing them um, these are clearly made very well um, you know this is not just some cheap thrown together off Alibaba type product um, these are actually made in the UK or at least they're assembled there um, and I know he waxes the handles the wooden handle uh, to prevent it from like kind of um, getting ruined by the water. That being said, I wouldn't leave it sitting in water. Um, I've left it in a bucket for like three or four weeks just to see what happens. And uh, this black piece around the, the bottom here will start to split the plastic. Um, I think that's pretty, you know, understandable. I don't know why you would leave a uh, brush sitting in water for that long. Um, but especially if you're out like in the sun, direct sunlight, and you leave these in a bucket for days and days, they will start to kind of uh, swell from the water and it can cause damage. Plastic ones, I've not tested that yet, um, but just from my experience in the past with other brands of plastic brushes, um, I doubt that will be a problem. So if for some reason you are someone that leaves your brushes sitting in water for days or weeks at a time, uh, I would probably advise the soft touch brush. Uh, another cool feature about this, just kind of when I, right when I opened them and I noticed the hand handles are quite a bit different. Um, there's a lot of companies that make these, uh, the bristles are all somewhat similar, I'd say, um, amongst all the different brands, but he clearly put some good thought into the handles. Um, they have a really nice like rubber grip to them. They're pretty thick uh, and it's just, it's, it's robust. Like I can't even bend it, you know, it's, it's uh, just a nice, nice brush that seems like it'll hold up a little bit better than some of the other ones I've had in the past where like they come disconnected here, um, where like the, the yellow part here meets the black, they break and fall off. This thing feels really solid. So um, I'm gonna start with Siege. I brought both out today because I actually wanna do some testing. So I'm gonna try rotor. Um, all four wheels are pretty equally filthy. The front's obviously being a little more dirty, um, but I'm gonna do Siege 15 to one to get the tires and wheels on this. And then I'm gonna try um, rotor on the other side at 10 to one, just to kind of see what's the, you know, am I having to go over twice with rotor as to where once with Siege. Uh, from my experience, Siege is very strong, um, which I like. I don't like having to uh, go over things multiple times, especially if it's like this, where I just want a clean slate. I'm not really worried about being gentle with a ceramic coating or worrying about, you know, um, degrading anything from alkalinity. So, um, but I just wanted to test both today. I don't anticipate rotor is going to clean tires nearly as well as Siege. I mean, Siege, you'll see it browns them up if they're dirty. These look semi-dirty. So go ahead and get started with uh, 15 to 1 with Siege. Start with 
tires using a Gion tire brush. Any stiff brush will work. So his tires are not very dirty. They're not browning at all. But I'm still gonna scrub them to get whatever tire dressing that's on here off so we can replace it with ink and car scope. It's also worth noting neither of these products are reactive so they're not going to have the color change um, they're not designed for embedded ferrous particles or anything like that so if the wheels are bad enough after cleaning with this you're going to want to use something like NV purge Aztec wheel something along those lines sounded worse than it was. This just got stuck in the barrel. <laughs> uh, both of these products are safe for ceramic brakes, so that's worth noting as well. Um, and I know some people probably when they hear the comment about the fallout cleaner or like the reactive cleaner um, are going to say, well, why wouldn't you just start with that? Um, and this is just my opinion. Uh, it might be overly thorough. I might be overthinking it, but to me, um, for a fallout cleaner or like a reactive wheel cleaner to do its job as good as possible, um, I would actually want the wheel to be clean first. I know that sounds weird, but um, if, you're ha if you're spraying it on top of a ton of brake dust and the product is really intended to get embedded brake dust off, I would rather it be on a wheel that's been cleaned with something like Seizure Rotor first so that there's nothing between the embedded contaminants, the embedded brake dust, and the cleaner. So, um, you know, I've, I've tried it both ways, and from my experience, um, if I clean the wheel first, I find that I'm only having to go over with the reactive cleaner one time, as to where if I don't clean the wheel first and I just go straight to the reactive cleaner, um, I typically have to do two passes to really see all that embedded brake dust go away. And most of the reactive cleaners are not cheap. Uh, the ones we sell are a little bit pricey. Um, they work extremely well, but from an effectiveness standpoint and from a cost standpoint, I'd rather clean the wheel with something like this and then use my fallout cleaner. <laughs> rinse away here see where we're at if I need to do another pass you can use siege neat um, so if like the wheels or the tires are just absolutely hammered uh, you can use it straight up you don't have to dilute it uh, today's my first time actually using it 15 to 1 because I wanted to see how it does at its lightest dilution um, and I'm pleased I mean the wheels were pretty dirty and they've turned around seemingly in one pass So yeah, um, I think using it at stronger than 15 to one would have honestly been a waste of product. So glad I went with that. I'm gonna go to the next wheel and use rotor instead. I can still see that the tires are um, 
beading from whatever tire shines on here. Uh, this is straight siege, so I could just go over it again, but seeing that I didn't see any browning from 15 to one, uh, what I'm gonna do to get the rest of this tire dressing off is once we pull it inside, I'll take something like Gion Tar um, or S-Tech Tar and Adhesive Remover and uh, wipe the tires until the dressing is removed. So I'm gonna go on to the next one, use rotor and compare the two to see how they do. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a look up close at the wheels. Um, the lighting's giving me trouble here, but uh, to show you guys kind of how, how uh, dirty they are, for anyone who maybe is on the fence between um, whether they should do siege or rotor. Um, so this is the wheel I'm gonna be using rotor on um, versus the other rear wheel, which was equally as dirty that I used siege on. So here it is now, nice and clean. Um, you can see the rotor is rusting a little bit. So we'll see how different that is on the other side by using rotor. But um, I just wanted to give you guys an up close look for people at home who are trying to decide between the two to give you like a real idea of what these products can cut through. Okay, so on this side, like I said, I'm gonna be using rotor 10 to one. Uh, this is the wheel I just showed you guys the up close of. So let's see how it does. One of the things I like about these Marilex is the locking, locking feature on the trigger. Makes life a little bit easier. So right off the bat, uh, one observation I'll say is that this is quite a bit foamier. I do know Siege is like the viscosity of it. It's very thick. It's almost like a gel. So anyone who buys it from our store, um, we are missing the foaming tips, but Henry's gonna get those out this week. So um, if you place an order and it doesn't come with the foaming tip on your sprayer for Siege, we will contact you and send you one as soon as they come in. Um, so I'm not sure if Rotor is foaming more because that's just simply the, the product itself or if it's because it's a stronger ratio than what I use for Siege. If I had to guess, it's probably a little bit of both, um, being that this is 10 to one instead of 15 to one, and also uh, rotor is not as thick. It's much thinner and it's extremely slick, um, which I do like for like jet black wheels for maintenance and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna get the camera and show you guys how it's running off here. So it is really pulling a lot of dust off with no agitation. You can see it in the foam, the amount of dirt, brake dust it's pulling off. So even at 10 to one, <clears throat> that's really impressive. Um, so I've got rotor in the bucket as well. Uh, and I did on the other wheel, haven't changed that. Um, so I'm gonna give this a uh, scrub with the Gion brush and the soft touch brush and uh, see what our end result is. Start with the tires. So it's probably hard to see on camera, but um, the cleaning power of this on tires is not nearly the same as Siege, which uh, I expected to be the case. It's my first time using rotor on tires, like with a brush. Um, so again, like if your tires aren't super dirty, um, that tire didn't even brown with Siege. So like tires like this that aren't super bad, um, something like rotor is probably perfectly fine, um, especially if you're in that maintenance mode. So like last wash or last detail, you applied your ink or your Envionics or whatever, you know, SiO2 based uh, G on tire or something like that. Um, rotor would probably be perfectly acceptable to uh, just keep your tires clean 
maybe you can apply like a second light layer, like a topper layer of your dressing. Um, but I find a lot of times with these like SiO2 dressings that we sell, sometimes just a cleaner like rotor and then drying the tire off, it's fine. Um, at least for like one or two washes until it's time to really scrub them and reapply fully. <laughs> Yeah, this is way foamier and way slicker. I mean, I can even feel it through the um, through the wheel brush. I mean, it's gliding quite a bit more than Siege. So I do like that for maintenance washes, especially on a lot of these jet black wheels, like the ones on my BMW, where I'm dealing with a ton of dust. Definitely want something lubricated. It's not gonna scratch the wheels up. These soft brushes come as a two pack. So there's a long handled bristle, which I like for wheels because I can reach kind of harder to reach areas. And then they also have a short one, short one. So I typically divide them up for uses. I'll use the short one on paint and trim and stuff like that, badges. And then I'll use the longer one for wheels and engine bays. Again, I like using the wooden handle ones for engine bays, a little bit stiffer. So I've just finished the wheels and tires, uh, sort of a recap of that process. Um, the more I use rotor and siege, I've kind of found the balance of how I'm gonna use the two of them together. Um, if the wheels have not been ceramic coated and they're very dirty, siege is gonna be my go-to because I can knock out the tires and wheels in one step. It is the stronger of the two. Um, for wheels like on this Ford GT, you know, they weren't super dirty. Um, the tires, although they have a dressing on here that I'm gonna get off inside using a tar remover, um, they weren't filthy. Like even when I sieged the back uh, driver's side, it didn't brown up. So I found that by using rotor, I was able to clean both the wheels and tires just fine. Uh, I think it would have even been more effective had I used it in the foam cannon versus the Merrill X foaming uh, pump sprayer. But as I said earlier, the pump sprayer is a little more convenient. So, um, I would just gauge it based on like your needs. So if you're someone who's washing like every week or every two weeks, rotor's probably gonna be your go-to because um, your tires are probably not gonna get super dirty. Maybe you'll use Siege periodically every fourth or fifth wash to uh, really scrub the tires and reapply your dressing. Um, if you're someone that you don't have ceramic coated wheels, like on my truck, for example, and they get very, very dirty, the wheels and tires between washes, because I go quite a bit longer um, before I hand wash it, and also they're not coated, so they get really dirty. Um, Siege is probably gonna be the only one that I'm gonna use. I'm not even gonna use rotor. Uh, the third scenario, you can use them both together, which like on my F80, I'm eventually gonna coat the wheels, um, but my tires do get dirty because it's not a car that gets washed probably as much as I would like to wash it. But uh, so I could see myself using rotor to like maintain the ceramic coated wheels and using Siege as my dedicated tire cleaner. Um, we sell some really great tire cleaners here, some APCs and even the Gion uh, tire cleaner. I will say uh, Siege seems like the better value to me because it's concentrate. Um, Gion Tire Cleaner works really, really well. Um, I like it a lot and I like that it's ready to use for people who don't wanna mix stuff. They just wanna buy it and get right to work. It's great for that. Um, Siege though, the fact that I can adjust how strong I need it um, and the fact that it's a concentrate does make it the better value. So um, that's how I'm gonna be using Siege and Rotor in my regular wheel routines. Um, I guess the other scenario too is if you're prepping wheels for a ceramic coating, I would bypass rotor, just use Siege, and then probably follow up, not probably, I would definitely follow up with a fallout cleaner after using Siege to clean the wheels, if, assuming this is a set of used wheels. We do get new cars in where you can just go straight to the fallout cleaner, um, whether it's Gion Iron, Envy Purge, uh, Aztec wheel, what have you. So 
Now that we're done with the wheels and tires, gonna move on to the paint. Uh, I'm gonna be using Baltic and Contact. So this is his snow foam and his shampoo. So Baltic is pretty cool. Uh, it's a sugar-based product, so it doesn't contain salt and fillers. It is safe to use on ceramic coated paint at the 50 to one dilution ratio. Today I'm gonna be using it at 10 to one because I wanna get this car as clean as possible for PPF and uh, paint correction. So it also contains the same anti-corrosion inhibitors that Rotor has. So pretty interesting fact. Contact is his car shampoo. Uh, this is a very highly concentrated product, but at the proper dilution ratio, it is totally safe for ceramic coated car. Uh, the first thing I notice about this product when I use it is the slickness. It's extremely slick. Uh, he recommends using it as a clay lubricant and I totally see why. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that today. I'm just gonna kind of see after I use Baltic and after I hand wash with contact. Um, but if you were gonna use it as a clay lube, the way I would recommend doing that is wash with Baltic, hand wash with contact, and then mix a separate foam cannon with contact at 10 to one, <clears throat> excuse me, foam the entire car down, and then use like your clay cloth or uh, clay bar with the 10 to one foam on the car. Um, I, I mean, on this car, it does have some swirls already. Um, I tend to fare on the uh, side of carefulness when it comes to claying, so we'll see. If, if the paint is very smooth after I prep wash it, um, I might use contact as the clay lube, or I might opt to wait and do it inside so that I can be a little more uh, tedious and methodical with it. So gonna get started by filming it down with uh, Baltic at 10 to one. Uh, some of the tools, not using a ton of different ones, but gonna be using uh, his wash pad, microfiber wash pad, the shorter soft touch brush, and the wax it uh, clay cloth here. So start, start by filming it down. So in the instructions for the product, uh, he mentions you can let it dwell for up to 10 minutes. It's a nice overcast day here, so I might let it dwell for even longer than that. Um, we'll just see if it starts to dry up on me, then I'll uh, rinse it off before hand washing. It's a really good time to take your uh, brush and start to go around all the trims and seals. I am working here on a Sunday, so it's 
peacefully quiet. Normally the office park here is pretty, uh, pretty crazy with cars coming through and stuff. So might be coming out here more on Sundays to do videos for you guys. So I'm not having to chop it up and edit it into different sections. So we have walk-in customers, delivery people. It's always something going on. The only non-CarScope product I'm gonna be using today to prep this is I am gonna be using a fallout cleaner. Um, after I hand wash, after we rinse off Baltic, then I hand wash with contact. I am gonna use probably NV Purify. That's really, in my opinion, the best fallout cleaner we sell. It is very strong. And in some cases, on brand new cars, it gets the paint so clean that um, it's almost hard to justify even cleaning the paint because it's so perfectly smooth. So that's what I'll be using today. This awesome car. Gonna really do a good job brushing all the cracks on the front of this thing since we're PPFing it. Nothing worse than having debris come out of these cracks and get under your film install. It amazes me how uh, fast at least people claim they can film a car, which don't get me wrong, I mean, you know, I've gotten faster over the years at applying the film itself, but it takes me, as you can see, a while just to even prep the car to get ready to put the film on it. So, I'm sometimes skeptical when I hear people say how fast they can film a car, but maybe they're not including the washing step. I don't know. Sweet car this is. I remember when these came out when I was in high school. Freaking awesome, man. All right, do the latch on this side. Here. It's gonna be a fun hood to wrap, that's for sure. And of course there's no patterns for this car. I think Expel has some, which we don't do Expel here, um, but I've been told they're not even that great of patterns, which is not unusual for cars of this age. Um, so this is gonna be a total freehand uh, custom hand cut job.
So there's obviously something on the glass, probably rain -X or something like that. The paint doesn't really look like, I mean, it's, I'm sure it obviously left the factory with something at some point. And I don't know if it's been like wiped down with quick detailers since then or what, but whatever is on the paint is not, you know, performing very well. So um, the other thing I forgot to mention about Siege is uh, it's not safe to use on wheels that are not clear coated. Um, so like my BBS LMs on the E30, I will not be using it on that because the lips specifically, uh, being that they're that polished aluminum, it will fade those out because of the alkalinity of the product. So just wanted to mention that. Um, so yeah, now that it's foamed down, uh, generally what I do at this point is, you know, I just assess the paint. Um, if it's super dirty, um, I'll wash it first, but this is actually pretty clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my purify step now. Um, and the reason is just honestly for efficiency. So I could wash it first um, and then do purify and then wash it again to get the purify off. But there's really no like visible dirt. Uh, this car really just had like dust on it. Um, so I don't know if it's, I don't think the wheels have been cleaned, but um, I don't know if they've just like wiped it down or washed it or whatever between drives. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and do purify right now and then uh, we'll wash it with contact after that. Again, nice overcast day, so I'm going to go ahead and purify the whole entire car at one time. Uh, if I was working in either direct sun or even like a, you know, a hot day where the paint is warmer, I would probably work one, maybe two panels at a time. Purify can also be used as a clay lubricant. It's extremely slick. So really, if you're doing like this exact process that I'm doing right now, you could do it either way. You could um, clay with Purify um, or you could clay with contact. In the specific order I'm doing this, I would not clay with Purify because I've not hand washed the car yet. So. If you did want to clay with Purify, you would hand wash the car first and then uh, Spray your purify on and clay. And of course we're running out just as we get to the end. Gotta get some more. So I didn't have a open four liter of Purify and I didn't want to open up another small bottle. So um, we've got more four liters coming this week actually, but uh, Purge can also be used as a fallout cleaner on paint. It actually works really well. Um, technically it's actually stronger than Purify when it comes to the uh, removing embedded impurities, but it cannot be used or I would not use it as a clay lube. It's not a slick, so you're probably gonna scratch the paint. But since I'm not uh, using Purify as a clay lube and I'm just trying to remove the fallout, I'm gonna go ahead and use Purify to hit this last little like quarter area where I ran out of Purify. So 
So I am actually seeing a pretty good amount of purple uh, fall off. So it is reacting um, specifically like behind the wheels, which is not surprising. You've got the brake dust coming up off the car, hot brake dust that's embedding itself into the paint. And I anticipate the rear bumper is probably gonna do the same from the exhaust, but we'll see. So since it's nice and overcast, I'm gonna let this just sit for a little bit. Um, I've got enough Baltic actually here. Um, for any of our viewers that watch Carcraft Auto Detailing, Sandro, it's a really awesome channel. I recommend uh, watching it, especially if you wanna learn more about NV products. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. So I'm um, gonna take a page out of his book that I've been doing for a while, ever since watching his channel, which is uh, foaming the car down after using Purify. Um, I've got a little bit of Baltic here. Normally he does it with Snow Plus, and that's normally how I do it. But uh, since I've got this here, I'm just gonna go ahead and foam it down. And what this is gonna do is allow the product to dwell longer. Um, you're sort of in a sense like reconstituting the product um, by getting it wet and the foam, the, the like shaving cream viscosity of it, it's obviously gonna help it clean and sit for longer. Um, that being said, you never wanna wait until it's drying up. You never want any of these fallout cleaning products to just completely dry because it will etch the paint and then you're gonna have to polish to get it off, so. Um, but in this case, uh, I was probably two or three minutes away from it drying up. So I foamed it down just to give it some more dwell time. Any of the fallout cleaning products, the longer they can sit on the paint without drying up, the better they're gonna work. Now at this point, I really have two options. I could foam the car, or, uh, sorry, rinse the car down to get all the foam off, um, or I could just start hand washing with contact. Um, I'm probably going to rinse it off because uh, it is reacting quite a bit. I'm seeing a lot of purple fall down. So I'm gonna get all this off and then wash off with contact, which is gonna give me a totally clean slate to take it inside and start claying it. Um, and getting it prepped for PPF and paint correction. So you can see even uh, whatever was on here, sealant from the factory or quick detail or whatever, it's sheeting quite a bit slower. So a lot of the beading is gone, sheeting slower. So obviously the Purify and Baltic at this dilution are knocking off some of whatever is on the paint.
so that is going to be it for today for this Ford GT. It's starting to drizzle on me here, so I want to go ahead and use contact to get this thing hand washed and pull it inside as quickly as possible so I don't get caught out in the rain with this low mileage Ford GT. It's an amazing car, and I would hate to see it get rained on. So I'm going to wrap this one up for today. Uh, hope you guys were able to learn more about the CarScope products. I uh, look forward to hearing people's questions about the products um, and how we can help better answer those. So I'm going to be touching base again on this car this week as I begin to do the PPF on it. going to show you guys a little bit about how I approach doing PPF on something like this, a totally custom job on a rare car, um, and also what products and techniques we're going to be using to do the compounding and polishing of the paint that's not getting wrapped. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on future videos, I would love to hear your feedback. Please feel free to drop a comment, shoot me a message personally, send me an email, and we will do our best to make some content around that. So make sure to subscribe to see future videos, and thank you again for watching.